Hello everybody, welcome to Craft Along on a Sunday. I hope you're having a lovely day. I hope you've enjoyed the sunshine. We sat outside and I've got a little bit of a tan. A little bit of a tan, it's nice and warm outside. Felt like we were on holiday. Um, sitting at the picnic table outside the office. It was lovely, very nice. And then we had afternoon tea and a cup of tea because it is International Tea Day. Um, so do take full advantage of it being International Tea and Tea Day and drink as much tea as you possibly can. Um, or was that, cut? you can get like a, a fruit bread that's soaked in tea, which is supposed to be quite nice. Like, really? a, like a cake, yeah. Mm. Uh, anyway, we've got Craft Along today, haven't we? Oh, Craft Along, and it's all about Baroque dyes. I'm really looking forward to this. If you've seen on Michelle's Facebook and Instagram pages, you would have seen the absolutely gorgeous item that she's going to be making in this Craft Along. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. Lots of people are messaging in to say hello. Betty Weaver says hello from Idaho. Patricia says good morning, Pat. Good morning, Pat, in North Carolina. Ben McCarthy, of course. Aww. He always messages in. Good morning, Ben. Or good, mo good morning, good afternoon. We're still liking your cakes, your, your, um, your cookies, Ben. I think there's a company called Ben's Cookies, isn't there? Is there? Yeah, there's a company oh. called Ben's Cookies. And Sarah Brown says, hello again, my dear crafty friends. Back for some more fun. Sending you all hugs from Melbourne, Australia. P.S. Does Michelle need no more tissues? No. I think you're all right, aren't you? I'm all right for now. I've got I'm a packet of tissues right here now. ready. So if you need one, just let me know. I've got to say, though, I haven't read any of the messages yet because I knew if I did, I would ruin all of my makeup for this show. <laughs> and that is not a look you want to see. But I'm going to sit down. I'm going to sit down with my scone after this show because I haven't had mine yet. So I'm going to sit down with my scone. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to read all your messages. I'm going to tell George off because he put cream and then jam on his. Yeah, he's from Devon. No, you do it the other way. I do it the other way. I like I like my jam and then I like... Because I think if you put your jam first, you can put a huge dollop oh, of cream on the top. That is very true. Yeah. But I think, you know, level-wise, it's like scone, same amount of level of cream and then a dollop of jam on the top. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I see, I'm not, I'm not... I don't like lots of jam. I like, like a... Like it, if you were smear. buttering it, yeah, smear okay. of jam. Smear of jam. Yeah. Mm. How Mark do you, your, your scones, scones, do you say scones or scones? I say scone. I, scone. Do you say scone? Everyone else says scone, don't they? It's scone. scone. It's scone. No. That's the way it's scone. Best, yeah. So I don't know. We'll don't see. Know. Right, so what, is you, what are you going to be making for us <laughs> in the craft log? That's what we need to know. I was just thinking your arms are nearly that red. I know, that. it's really bad, isn't it? I was, however... Sat out the same amount of time as you, and nothing happened. A few freckles join up for me. I've got, I've got the ginger genes, you see. Do you reckon? Because my family, uh, my mum's side, they're all ginger, ah. so I have like the ginger genes. I don't ah. tan at all. This is as this is as tanned as I go. <laughs> <laughs> but but back to my lovely craft along. So it's just a nice little um, little handbag gift box. So I've got, we've got mm -hmm. a little tag on there. I've used a little magnet on the front and then it just opens up and it falls to the side and it opens lovely. This is a little flat top box here. Yeah. And I used a little bit of Velcro. This is a pizza style box and I've just got mine tucked in there. All very simple, I promise, but once you put these kind of things together, it just looks fabulous. You can have it, obviously, on the outside or on the inside, mm -hmm. but we've got an, a, a little box. I was supposed to go out and fill it with chocolate, and I totally forgot. Perfect Snicker or Mars bar size. Yep. Double Decker, Whisper, mm -hmm. your chocolate of choice. But um, the, the way I've made it is, so if I just turn it to the side, so when it all closes up, you can see it wraps around oh, that yes. box in the middle. So it wraps around that box in the middle, it closes beautifully, and you've got a lovely, um, well, you've got loveliness on all sides. You're not seeing those inner boxes. Mm -hmm. What we've done is we've just got a little mount board here. So it's just a couple of strips of mount board that we've covered, and it just tidies it up nice and beautiful. So then when someone opens it, it's, um, it's a nice big surprise as to what's gonna be in there for them. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, I'm so looking forward to seeing you make this. It looks absolutely so excited to do yeah. it. 
It's nice, it's really nice. So this is of course using our Baroque um, border dies. Um, so you can see them um, just to the side here. Um, so these are the complete collection. You've got four different ones there. Um, £24.99 or $29.99. Platinum price is £19.99 or $23.99. If I show you on the boards, you can see, uh, possibly see a little bit better than you can in the packaging. This first one is your Chambord. Then this one is your Talence. We then have your Lyon and we have your Dijon and you can see you're getting quite a lot of different um, shapes in here so you're getting that die that cuts the outside and also getting the die that's cutting all that intricate layer on there and um, so for all four of these that is a great price really looking forward to what you are um, going to be making and um, so what do we need in order to make this craft along do this craft along with you Right, so the ingre ingredients, ingredients. <laughs> yes, your ingredients um, that you are going to need to make this fabulous craft along are, so I'm using the Dijon Baroque border uh, die, you can use any of them except for the band one, we won't be having that on this show. Um, you need your tag punch, uh, your Bohemian collection, I use the 12 by 12 paper pad and the A4 linen card. Uh, linen card, sorry, you again can use anything that you've got in your stash. Um, I also used one of the tassels from this collection and one of the metal charms. Again, any of your tassels or charms that you've got in your stash will do. Um, a bit of mount board, black card and your guillotine. And then you are also going to need some magnets, um, all-purpose glue, tacky glue, your dotty tape pen, uh, red liner tape, uh, I use the 6mm, uh, your Gemini midi or a larger, your score master scoreboard, any of your scoreboards really, as long as it's big enough, uh, scissors, hook and loop fastening dots, and then some ribbon and gems from your own stash. Excellent. Fantastic. Right, while you get yourself um, ready, I'll go through a few um, hellos. I've got uh, Lisa saying happy Sunday from Minnesota. Christy Mahoney says good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, Sarah Brown says, no, George, jam, then cream. <laughs> oh, my Lord, man. I, I think it depends on what pot. That was um, Sarah Brown. It depends where you're from. So Cornwall and Devon have different theories. I, I don't mind, as I said before, um, but it needs to be strawberry or raspberry jam, not pineapple jam that I had at a friend's party. Wrong, what? on very many levels. <laughs> um, Paul Prince times four says good morning from South Carolina. Rachel Brown says good morning from a sunny Shropshire. It is very sunny everywhere around here in the UK. Zoe Carver says afternoon everyone from West Sussex. Diane says good after an afternoon from a semi-sunny Caterham. Um, Donna says hello from Florida and that is beautiful on your craft along. It looks lovely. Thank Sarah you. Brown says I've saved the show because I've just received these beautiful dyes. Um, Rhonda says good morning everyone. This looks like a lovely project. It really does. I think it's beautiful. I love the colours that Michelle's been making with this. And Hannah says good morning. Oh, so good afternoon from Crawley. Apparently I've put my Baroque border dye somewhere really safe and I can't find it. <laughs> so I'm going to try and make the box and the craft along and add the swirls later. That's a great yeah. idea. You'll find it when you're not looking for it. When you're looking for something else, you're like, oh, there it is. Or if you buy it again, thinking you've lost it forever, it will turn up as soon as the new ones arrive. Right, we're going to get started. So what we... Oh, well, oh yeah, I need to tell you about the other deals we've got on the show. <laughs> Sorry. I'm overexcited because I want to see the box being made. We have got on the website, and um, there's a bog off offer. Um, so buy one, get one free. That will give you um, buy one, get one free on certain items. You need to use the code bog off may in order to um, receive that free item. But if you spend over twenty pounds or twenty dollars, um, you will get a free masquerade ball uh, chandelier die. And if you spend over hundred pounds or hundred dollars, you will get a free three D scene builder stamp and die set. So well worth um, taking the opportunity to see what's on there. Um, but obviously, if you want to get the Baroque dies, you're going to be getting your over your £20 um, or $20, so that's worth um, popping in your basket, I think. Right, yeah. now, I'm overexcited. Let's get started. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I've been stood here doing this. I'm so excited to get ready, get going. Um, right, so I've got my guillotine out already. We're going to bring in black card. Um, so, lots of, so it's all made with black. And again, you can use your white card. You can use your craft. It's entirely up to you. I went with black because I think it really pops against the colours that I've used. Mm -hmm. um, and again, but white will look just as beautiful. So all personal preferences. So what we're going to do to start with, we're going to cut two pieces down. 
and they're going to be eight inches long by six inches wide so my box um is all six inches wide okay. so then obviously um we're going to do the length so two pieces at eight by six i'm going to do it this way So eight by six. And then one more at eight by six. And turn it round. And then you're gonna need one piece at six by six. Okay. So all I've really tried to make sure that this no, no measurements per se no maths none of that nonsense all quite nice and easy and simple um, once you have learned the basis of this so when i show you how to do this then you can go on if you want um your flap to come in at an angle so you've got a stereotypical you know bag flap mm -hmm. once you've got all these sort of basics down then you can go on if you want to um, make it a, a lot more fancy um, I thought if we do it this way, we can um, sort of cover all the bases for everyone. So beginners and those a little more advanced. So those are my three pieces for now. I'm going to bring in my scoreboard and my score tool. So these two bigger pieces first, we're going to score these just at six inches. So on the long side, we're just going to put one scar line at six inch. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring in the other and do exactly the same. So we've got two pieces at six inches and then that two inch um, fold. So I'm just going to fold those over because what you're going to get straight away is that's your bag coming together. So those are our two sides. So pop that to the side. So this is going to be the bit that flaps um, over to close it. Mm -hmm. So we want a one inch tab to glue it to the back of our bag. And then it needs to be two inches wide because that's how wide my bag is. And then I've got my flap, which is three inches. So you're scoring at one and at three. So that gives you a one inch tab, the two inch for over the top, and I've got a three inch um, deep um, flap or the front of the bag. You can have this a lot deeper if you want. Um, so again, if I bring this in, this is three inches. I could bring it down to four. I could have a little small one at the top, which is only two inches. Again, that's entirely up to you. Mm -hmm. So let's pop that to the side just for now. So we're just going to glue these two pieces together. So again, let me just bring this in so you can see what it's going to be. It's going to be this bit here. So it's just going to be that long piece yeah. on the bottom. And then this bit here, if I just give those a quick scar, you can see is going to be this okay, bit here. Yeah. So let's pop that. I think if I keep referencing it, it makes it easier for you to visualise exactly what I'm doing. So what we're going to do straight away is we're just going to glue those two pieces together. So let me just take that off there. And I know I tend to talk very fast, especially now we haven't got someone crafting along. Yeah. So if anyone needs me to slow down or repeat, don't forget, you can always ask. Sometimes think I'm in a speed talking competition. Do you think you'd win? Um, if it was speed talking nonsense, yeah. <laughs> That sounds like a challenge. <laughs> so um, was just... a few weeks ago when Sarah was um, here and she was doing, uh, she did her marathon amount of demos, didn't she? Yeah. And I was looking to see if there's a, um, a Guinness Book of Re Records, world record, for the amount of cards made in a, in a certain amount of time and I couldn't find one. Ah. So I thought what we should do is um, everyone, would t on, on f Fun Fridays, um, somebody in, within the company should have a go at a world record. And there are lots of world records to choose from. Um, like there's one world record about how many um, Ferrero Rochers you can eat in one minute. Really? I'm up for that. I'm up for that. I think it'd be quite good. For that. <laughs> um, but I just thought it'd be quite, quite interesting because it'd be all sorts of different things. So you could do one at speed talking, maybe. I think I could. Yeah, I think so. I think I could do that. <laughs> Definitely. Right. So for this, we're going to 
um, glue that tab behind. So uh, again, I'm just going to put two little notches on my tab. You do not have to do this. I just find it always sits a lot better um, with that little notch cut away. So again, so we're going to glue on the inside here and we're going to pop it on there to the outside. And why do you take that little notch out? I just take it out. Um, if you butt this up straight on, yeah. it, um, it, it tells, if you have that tiny, tiniest little bit out, it tells a lot more right. than if you um, corner it like that. Okay. And it just, because I corner all my box, when I'm making boxes and stuff, when I corner all those kind of things, you get into the habit of any kind of tab, you're always gonna put that little notch on. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if this was my base and I was making an exploding box and I had one of these on all four sides, yeah. to glue all four of these under, when you've got those sitting on each other at that um, corner, yeah. it's really bulky. Right. So you cut those notches away Okay. Um, and then you just get into the habit of doing it all the time without right. thinking. It just sort of slimlines things down, I think, a little. So again, using our glue, we're going to glue that tab on. Onto there. And then what I always do is I always bring this up. So then I know I can push this up right up to it. Mm -hmm. And I know it's exactly where I want it to be. When you have sort of got them down like that and you're gluing them together, um, you're going to get it absolutely fine, but the, the risk is it, it might be a little bit wonky. So as long as you've got that up there and you're pushing that to it, you are going to get that bob on. Uh, oh, bob on every time. <laughs> I said that for a while, ever. So let's just do that. So again, I'm using Kalal, so it's just going to take a second for it to go off. So I'm going to give it a nice good burnish so you can bring in your uh, bone folder if you want. So straight away you can see that that is my box base coming oh, together yes. or my bag base yep. straight away. So we're going to pop that to the side for a minute and then we're going to bring in your choice of linen card and your choice of pattern paper. Uh, entirely up to you. It looks beautiful together. So this is the Bohemian. Mm -hmm. I love it. Just everything about this paper pad is gorgeous. They're beautiful colours, aren't they? Really rich, Absolutely beautiful. Right, so we're going to do mats and layers for the inside and the outside. Um, not only does it make it look fabulous, but it really strengthens it up. Because you remember we're putting those boxes in there, so we want all our sides to be nice and strong. So we've got, we're going to mat and layer on the inside and have a layer on the... Um, mat and layer on the outside and have a layer on the inside. You've got like, what, 1,000 GSM maybe? So it's going to make it nice and strong. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, inside and outside, we've got six by six for these and that's two. So straight away, we're gonna go down that quarter of an inch and we're gonna to go to five and three quarters by five and three quarters. And again, I always, always bring it in to check um, that I'm happy with it. Not because I'm forgetful at all <laughs> and can forget from measuring it to cutting it, just how <laughs> off I've gone. It's very easy for me to do. So five and three quarters by five and three quarters for the um, linen. And then this is going to be five and a half by five and a half. And because you've got sort of beautiful elements, if you want to specifically cut that bit out, then absolutely go for it. So I am going to... So five and a half by five and a half. And again, I was double checking that I'm happy with it. So let's do the next one. So that's five and a half as well. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. So let's glue those two on first. Let's do it a little bit at a time rather than cutting out lots of mats and layers um, and sort of not knowing where we're going. 
Right, so um, obviously the way it's sitting is the outside, so I'm going to flip it, either flip it over or flick that up. Um, remembering however you turn it over that that is going to be um, up or the top, top and bottom. So let's glue these two together first. So again, I'm just using my Kalal because it's just the best for this. Um, well, it's just the best full stop, but absolutely for any mats and layers, it's brilliant. Your um, tape pen. Well, you could do. You absolutely could do. But when I'm making something like this, and I'm going to be gifting it, and I know whoever's going to be using it is going to be opening it yep. and closing it a lot, and because it's got those boxes on the inside, once your collar glue has dried, it's like it dries like a rock. It's really, it really gives the sturdiness mm -hmm. that you want when you've got a project like this. So there's many reasons that I use it but absolutely that one it gives um, your project real strength so if you're making this in particular colors for um, a little girl mm -hmm. and you know or even a little boy yeah um, and you know that they're going to be playing with it yeah as much strength as you can get into your project the better and plus if you if you are making to sell you don't want to sell something that someone's going to say, well, I've bought from them and this came off yeah, or this peeled away. Um, you don't want that. You want, you want the best quality of anything. Um, and this absolutely is that. So this is going to go on here. And obviously that's going to go over. So before I do anything else, I'm going to use my magnet for this closure. So before I glue this onto the front, I'm going to attach a magnet. Um, and then obviously we're going to pop one on here, but I'm going to have a magnet on the inside so it's closer. So I'm going to turn this round so I've got the flap of my bag here and I'm going to bring in my magnets. So let me just get those out. Right, I'm going to bring one in and then with my pencil, uh, where is it? There it is. Again, I was using my glass mat to measure things. Um, I'm going to roughly, so we've got halfway between that. So about three inches, we're going to pop a little uh, pencil mark. I'm going to bring in a little bit of red liner. And we're going to pop it here. It's just, it, just, it just needs to be rough. It doesn't have to be... Um, perfectly in the middle and then positioning this as mm -hmm. well so you need to make sure that you position your magnet far enough in that when you put your paper over if I've got this magnet way too close I'm not going to be able to glue that down and it's going to sit um, away from my card and it's not going to look very nice so you need to make sure that you position it far enough away from the edge that I'm gonna be able to glue my paper shut okay. flat. And you also need to make sure that you, you um, position it in a place that it's um, gonna sit nice and comfortably on the front as well. Believe it or not, if you put your magnet in the wrong place, it's not gonna shut properly because if you've got mats and layers, it, it, it doesn't allow it to you know, connect properly. Mm -hmm. So, pop that on there. And then, Do you prefer to use magnets rather than um, hook and loop? Um, yeah, I do use magnets more, um, just because I enjoy using them. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I think if you're making to sell, yep. I think it adds... Not being able to see all the workings is always yeah, quite good, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you can't see the workings, but I think it's just, it, it adds value. Does yeah. that sound daft? No, no. When you've got so. something and it's got a hook and loop on it, or it's got a magnet on it, it just, I think it elevates it to, yeah. I don't know, the next level. Right, so what I've done is I've obviously put my second magnet on there. I've attached some red liner on the top. By popping it on there, when I bring it over, now it's going to be exactly where I need it to be. So I'm going to bring this to that corner or that uh, line where my lid is. I'm just going to hold that straight there, right in the corner. 
and then I'm going to bring this over, making sure that it's, nothing's moving. And you can see it's nice and flat. So when I lift that up, that one's glued where I want it to be, and so is that. And it's just going to sit perfectly. So let's get on with these mats and layers. Now I've got that on there, I can pop this on here. And again, so depending on what card and paper you're using, pop mm -hmm. that over there, make sure that you've still got that connection. Because sometimes, depending again on what magnets you're using, too much paper and card on top is going to affect that. Right. Mine's still closing, lovely. So we're going to go ahead and glue this on the front. Sarah Brown says, I'm still waiting for my Bohemian collection, so I can't wait. And um, Christy Mahoney says, the project looks awesome. Terry Anderson says, I can't craft along right now, um, but I've saved this to my Michelle folder in the YouTube library. Yard work. Ugh. <laughs> oh, I, I, don't I don't want to be working out hard in the sunshine today. No. no. Gosh, I'm no. working hard, full stop, to be honest, anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be enjoying the sunshine wherever you can and having a nice, nice day learning, crafting. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, so we're gonna flick this all the way over and this back piece is where we're gonna pop that. Okay. So nothing other than just matting and layering and then gluing this piece on the back. So we're just gonna pop that on there. So just remembering my mats and layers with a linen card was five and three quarters by five and three quarters. And then the pattern was five and a half by five and a half. So it's looking lovely. This, the papers, the feathers, everything about this collection, I absolutely adore. So then all we're gonna do now, I think we'll, we'll cut the piece of paper for here. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe it might be time to have a little break and then if anyone's watching, yep. um, they can catch up. So just for the inside bit, that flap, if you remember, is two inches uh, by six. So we're gonna go down to one and three quarter. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 sorry. We're doing the flap, aren't we? No, nope, we're doing my flap. Not me top bit, we're doing the flap, aren't we? Which is three inches. So I'm thinking of this one, but we're doing that one. Right. So it's three inches. So we're going to go down to two and three quarters. Six inches wide. So we're going to go down to five and three quarters. So remembering it was that bit. So we're going to pop that on there. But while we're here, we're going to cut a piece for there, which is two inches. So we're going to go down to one and three quarters by five and three quarters. If I just pop that there for now. So I've got my piece for there and my piece for there. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you cut that and follow, uh, carry it on from the piece of paper, your pattern will carry on as well. Oh, yes. So you can see my pattern's carrying on. So then all we're going to do for those two pieces, we're just going to pop a little bit of uh, glue on there and then glue them in. So it's all quite nice and simple. Uh, so you're not putting any mats together. on this one? Not on that little yep. bit, no. I don't want a mat and layer on this piece because I don't want too much between the two magnets. Right. Yep. Um, and it's on the inside of my box. So if I bring this in, it's just on that inside bit there, mm -hmm. which is the bit that we're doing now. You could absolutely mat and layer it if you wanted, but I uh, didn't feel that I needed to. It's a bit of glue on this one. And pop that on there. Line that up. And make sure it's nice and glued there above that magnet. So this is a bit where you're going to have to make sure you burnish that, hold it until that glue goes off, because you don't want it gaping there. It almost looks like, um, you know, when you have those sort of screens, 
those oriental screens yeah. um, in, in your dressing room kind of thing. That's what that looks like to me. I know it's, um, it's not an oriental kind of design, but I think that red um, and black makes you think it's quite sort of oriental, doesn't it? Yeah, The colours go is. so well together. Yes, definitely. So you can see that that clothes is lovely. If I stand it up, it's um, coming along exactly how I want it to go. So, um, and, it, and my magnet works mm. perfectly. There we go. So, should we have a little break there? Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll give you an opportunity to catch up. Um, if there, you've got any questions, um, Oh, actually, I have got one question for you. I'll ask you that in a second. If you've got any questions about what Michelle's doing, um, do message in. Um, obviously, we have, haven't got a, a guest with us today, so we're just going to carry on crafting along. Um, but you, um, if you get lost um, or you need another measurement, just message in and let us know. Um, we'll give you a couple of moments um, to catch up, and we'll be back in... Um, no? Yeah? <laughs> we'll be back in... We're going to do, uh, yeah, so we'll give you, give you the opportunity to uh, ca catch up and then we're going to go back um, once you've caught up with that. Um, other items we wanted to show you on the show today um, are, is our pick of the day. Um, there's this collection of um, different cardstock here. So the first one we've got here is your linen cardstock. These are 12 by 12 um, linen cardstock and all of those colours are going to work so well um, with the demonstration that Michelle is doing at the moment. Um, we've also got um, your luxury mixed cardstock in these pastels. Um, so you can see you've got some really beautiful, almost like some centura pearl um, kind of colours as well as linen cardstock in all of those beautiful soft pastel colours, purples, blues and pinks, really, really pretty. We've also got um, a bundle of Miracard. Um, so this is um, gold and silver metallics. These are absolutely beautiful. We can see how incredible um, the designs are on here. So you've got all sorts of different patterns as well as sort of shapes like butterflies, always going to work really well um, with these um, in all sorts of different things, not just, I often think of gold being something you only use at, at Christmas, but actually a lot of those patterns you could use at any time of the year, really, really pretty. We also have a pack of our red luxury cardstock. So not only do you have some mirror card um, there, you've also got some satin finish and you've got some encapsulated um, glitter card in there as well. Um, so this is your red pack. And then we have um, a selection of Centura Pearl um, colours. You've got purples, pinks, greens, limes, turquoises, um, and some of those sort of softer um, sort of sea greens in there as well. Great value. There's 142 sheets. Um, this is £50 or $60. Platinum price is £40 or $48. Um, always useful to grab these kinds of things when they're on special offer. Do remember if you buy anything over £20 or $20, you get a free gift. And then there's another free gift for over £100 or $100 as well. Um, we'll take a quick break and we'll see you in a couple of moments. Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafters companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course, the Club Inspire community group on Facebook, where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration. And of course, you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend. And the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. Here at Crafters TV, it couldn't be easier to get your hands on the latest crafty must-haves. Leave the hard work to us while you shop from the comfort of your own living room. Head to the Crafters Companion website to see our full crafty range, or hit the Shop the Day button to see all the new and exciting products featuring on Crafters TV. Once you've filled your cart, leave it to us to get your crafty goodies to you in super quick time so you can get on with being creative. Crafter's Companion, making crafty shopping a breeze.
Welcome to Crafters TV. With more than 35 hours of live shows each week, it's your home for all things craft. We shine the spotlight on new and innovative crafting products with live tutorials and demonstrations. Join our family of craft experts where fun happens every day. Are we in trouble or are we all right? <laughs> yeah. Should be, should be should coming be in. in. Should be coming in. <laughs> what does she do? Exactly what does she do? She looks. <laughs> this is awesome. This is awesome. Get creative and craft along. With our amazing deals, your next craft project is just a click away. Tune in live seven days a week, or you can watch us on Catch Up at CraftersCompanion.com, Facebook, or our YouTube channels. You can chat to us, craft along, and meet new friends by joining our online crafting community. And I want you every day and it's just what really gets you through when you're really at rock bottom there's a show for every type of crafter from first-time dabblers to full-time makers crafters tv create every day thank you thank you i'd like to thank my mum my dad my oh they said get on with it the Crafters' Choice Awards are here. From the 23rd to the 26th of May, we'll be shining the spotlight on your most loved Crafters' Companion tools and creative goodies. Every day, a new category of crafting nominees will take to the stage, and we need your help to choose the winners. Head over to our website to cast your vote. You can also shop all of our nominated crafting items on our Crafters' Choice Awards online sale. There's gonna be so many fabulous offers and deals. It's the perfect opportunity to refresh your crafting space with paper craft, sewing products, and much more at award-winning prices. A new winner will be announced each day on Crafters TV, so tune in to the last show of the day for a glittering Crafters Choice Awards soiree. <sighs> <sighs> Hello everybody, welcome back. During the break we were talking about what jobs we would have done uh, had we not been doing the job that we're doing now and Johnny said the job that he wanted to do was be a bricklayer because he used to watch Alfie's own pet and thought going, on, going away with your mates uh, working all day and then sitting in the sunshine having a pub, uh, having a pub pint was the way he wanted to go. What If you could do any other job, <laughs> what would be the job that you would want to do? Let us know. Michelle, if you could have done any job, what would it have been? Um. A dancer. A dancer. Yeah. What kind of dancer? You know, My, a kind of a... Yeah, yeah. I used to... <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't catch me doing my dancing then. <laughs> it, like this dancing. This dancing. Well, I always loved my ballroom and my Latin American. Oh, yeah. I liked the rock and roll the best. Yeah. I liked to do a bit of a jive and stuff like that, a bit of a bop. Because you did tell me this morning that you, you've been on a, a, a very well-known show dancing, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I was on uh, Emmerdale when I was about 18. Um, yeah. I have proof. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got a, it. yeah, I've got it on DVD at home. Um, I'll have to bring it up and show you guys. But yeah, there was a, a dancing competition going on and... Uh, no, the dingles were not there. But um, it was... Um, was it... The, the people, Viv, Viv, who was in the pub. Oh, yeah. She was having an affair at the time with the bloke who run the post office. And they, was, they entered a dancing competition, and obviously our dance school with all the extras, all the dancers. Oh. Yeah. I got plenty of air time as well. Yeah. Oh, we definitely want to see that. <laughs> do you, does anyone remember watching Emma remember that episode? Um, if you do, you watched you watch Michelle years ago. Let us know what, um, what, what you would do if you, you weren't doing your current job. What, what would you do... Um, George, or do you have to have a think about it if you could do any job? Have a think about it. Let us know in a little bit of time. And um, so we are doing a craft along with these Baroque border dies. <laughs> Going back to work <laughs> now. Um, yeah, we're, <laughs> I'm not going to say that bit out loud. Um, we're going to carry on, Michelle. Shall we carry on? Everyone should we are have caught up by on. now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So if I bring in um, our bag that's coming together beautifully, what we're going to do is we're going to cut the matting layer for the top bit and the matting layer for this bit. So again, let's bring in our 
guillotine. So our bag is six inches wide. So this is going to be cut down to five and three quarters. The top is two inches wide, so mm -hmm. this is going to go down to one and three quarters. And then that front flap is three inches wide. So this is going to go down to two and three quarters. So bringing this in, we're going to pop that on here. We're going to make sure that we're happy with the sizing. I always, always do this um, because you've seen me many a time cut on here. Um, and I've missed, I've misread the five for the six and stuff. Yeah. So uh, it's always best. I always just, you know, what is it? Um, measure twice, cut once. That's exactly the way it should be, isn't it? Um, I have got a question. Um, Stephanie says, uh, Michelle, when making a project, um, do you fussy cut where your pattern will end up in the project? Do I fussy cut what, sorry? Do you fussy cut where your pattern will end up in the project? So do you sort of take into account, I suppose, when you're... Like when you were planning that, you were thinking, oh, I'll have that sort of large um, yeah. stream catcher in one place. Yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll look at a piece of, of this paper uh, and definitely. So if you look at that piece of paper, you've got that gorgeous element there. So I absolutely, you've got that gorgeous um, dream catcher. So I absolutely, I will do it so that's, um, if I want it centred, I'll obviously cut it so it's centred if I want it off a little bit. But yeah, if, if there's a particular imagery on there that I want centred, then I will definitely uh, cut round it so I can have that on on as, as the focal point because it's just beautiful and the thing is you're never ever going to waste all these little bits if you think well i fussy cut that bit out but i've got lots of bits if you remember how i did that um is it basket weave effect um you've seen me do it many times with all my off mm -hmm. off cuts you know making a new piece um by alternating them on there so you're never going to think oh i've got all this waste what shall i do with it because you're always going to be able to use it always um, right, so we're going to cut this at five and a half and then we're going to cut again. So the top piece is going to be one and a half inches and then the front bit again is going to be two and a half. So let's pop that to the side. We're going to glue this top piece together first. Mm -hmm. So let's pop that Hannah on. says, I was an extra salsa dancing in Cuban Fury and um, in, a, a, in a roll deep music videos, but I ended up on the cutting room floor. Oh. That's a, that's a shame, isn't it? That'd be quite galling. So in, um, uh, is it Love Actually? There was a, a whole other story with Frances de la Tour. Um, you know the woman that played... Um, uh, Madam, Madam, can't remember. In Harry Potter, she played the the sort of um, female headmistress. Um, she played a character. There was a whole storyline in Love Actually. Um, I think she she and her partner, one of them had um, had cancer, um, and there was a whole story which all interwove with all the other stories you had in Love Actually. But it ended up being cut. And you'd be really upset, wouldn't you? Oh, As, gosh, you know, to, yeah. to be in something and find out that you never got made, never never made it. I'll be, I'll be devastated. Don't do that to me when I make, make my way to Hollywood. <laughs> Please. I don't want to be on the cutting room floor. No. Oh, that's a little sad, isn't it? Mm. Right, so I've brought my die in. We've glued the top bit together, so we're just going to pop that to the side for now. I've brought the die in that I'm using. I'm using the, the Dijon. And I've got this bit. This is the bit that's going to cut out that lovely decorative piece. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring... Oh, in fact, I think I've got some offcuts here. So we're just going to die cut this out of here. So let's trim that down just a little. And I'm going to tape it down just to make sure it doesn't pop off of there. And we're going to run it through. So I'm using my junior plates in my bigger machine. Obviously, this is going to go through um, your... Do you know what? I bet that'll go through your mini. Mm -hmm. So that particular die... That um, sort of decorative one will go through your mini. Right. So this particular one here. The other one, maybe not so much because you're going to sort of be cutting that onto a bigger piece of uh, paper or card. Yep. But this one, absolutely. 
So let me just pull that off. Oh, it's so pretty. Lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Pop all those bits out. It, it does just say it looks like the lamp in, the, in Aladdin. Yeah. It does, very much like that. Absolutely. Especially with like, the swirls, it's almost like the smoke, the mystical smoke coming out of the um, uh, lamp. So, this is going to sit on here like so. So, I'm going to bring this die in because I, I get mine upside down every time. So I'm going to cut that out there. So um, I'm just using this now just to measure it to make sure I'm getting it the correct way. Because I, I keep putting it on upside down and thinking, oh, I've done it again. <laughs> I've turned it round three times thinking I'm getting it right and I haven't. So this piece that is, again, it's going to be on that front flap. I'm just going to line that up in the middle and tape it down. So let's pop that on there. I think we all have that one particular die um, or that one particular thing, no matter how many times we do it. And we know we can do it because we've just done it 20 times. You can guarantee we're going to do it wrong. Mm. Um, and that was this die for me. I did, could I put it on the right way? Could I heckers? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So let's lift that off. I'm still not confident I've done it the right way, but we'll see. Uh, we'll until see it's done out. and it's correct, I'm not sure. I'm just going to snip those edges away. There we go. So I'm going to bring this in. Just pop that there. And I'm going to sit that. Yes, I've done it. That perfectly. looks right to me. Yep. But see, it wasn't hard at all. <laughs> so we're going to um, glue this on. So I'm going to bring in my glue again. So let's just... I'm going to use my Kalal on this, but I'm also going to bring in my Dotty. So for those edges there, mm -hmm. that um, I'm not going to quite get to the edge with my uh, glue. I'm just going to pop a little bit of Dotty on them. Being very careful not to sort of lift them up. You can tell when I'm concentrating, can't you? Because my um, speech goes really slow, doesn't it? I think we're all the same, though, Michelle. Don't do yourself down. When we're all concentrating and doing something, <laughs> we were saying this yesterday, weren't we? When you colour in, um, actually, that takes quite a lot of thought. Um, you can't chat away whilst colouring um, so no. easily. It takes a bit of time. Um, Amal Amali says, I love theatre, so I would be acting if I wasn't doing anything else. That's a great idea. And Tracy says, if I was not dyslexic, I would have been a trauma doctor. I love helping people and saving lives. I did manage to get a degree in architecture with the help of um, somebody reading my books to me. Well done. Architecture is wow. a long one, isn't it? It's, it's as long as becoming a doctor, I think. Yeah. Seven years or something like that. That's impressive. That is impressive. Yeah. One of my friends that lives up here, and I do say, keep saying each time I come up here, I'm going to go and see her. She lives in Ponteland. Is that right? Is that how? It, not Ponte, not Pen, Pontyland, as I first called it. Um, she's an architect, and her sister's a, um, a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got wow. it completely wrong when I first said it. Ponteland, Pontyland, <laughs> Pontyland. It sounds like some kind of theme park, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Right, um, so let's open this up and lay it that way. So this is the top. Yeah. We're just going to pop that on there. Lovely. I think it's where I live. There's some weird names that are wrote right. absolutely not how they're pronounced. Like where? So down in Norfolk, yeah. there's um, a place, and if you read the sign, it says Happysburg. 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 So that's what it says. That's how it's spelled, Happysburg. Yeah. Um, oh, you can't say that, though. It's Haysborough. Oh. It's not even a little bit different. No. It's like total different ball parts. Yeah. But do they take um, great enjoyment to the Norfolk people when yeah. you say it wrong? Yeah. <laughs> and you're only, only going to know if someone actually says that's how that's said. Yes. I, um, where was I? I was near Utoxeter. 
Um, but I couldn't say you talked to I read it as utter Exeter, um, which everyone <laughs> found absolutely hilarious, and my husband still brings it up about 15 years later. Um, utter Exeter. Uh, um, if you don't know, you just don't know. Well, that's it, isn't yeah. it? So I'm going to... We're going to pop that down. The bottom of my embellished piece has just gone over the um, linen cardstock. Doesn't really matter because I've still got that black there. Um, if I'd have gone too low, I could have just you know, cut another piece out mm -hmm. and, and made it further up. But as it is, it's not coming over the bottom of that. So there would be two ways to get around that, really, if you wanted to. Again, just recut it out. Or, so if I bring this over, close it, you can see on here I've got a really thin border of black. And you can see if I bring this one in, I've got a wider border of black. Mm -hmm. Now, all I did was I cut a strip of black and I just attached it um, behind. Um, originally, when I was making that, I just liked the thicker border. Um, so, again, I just added a strip of black. It really didn't matter. It went perfectly across that line. Uh, and it's in, entirely up to you what you want to do with that. Mm -hmm. So again, for this bottom piece, um, you can see here that I've got some linen card stock and um, pattern paper. Mm -hmm. So again, we're just going to do exactly the same on the bottom. Um, black card stock, so I've got a piece here. I always, I've just said, haven't I? I'm always going to cut this piece out first and place it on because for some reason, the right way up of these isn't sinking into my brain. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'll cut that out, place it on, um, see that I'm happy that I've got it the right way up, and then just glue it on that way. Um, it still works out in the end, so all is good. So let's pop this one out. Pop that there. Were these the dies where we had um, like 24 different ways you could use them when we were um, sort of first launching them? I think it was something similar, wasn't oh, it? Oh, the... Yeah, loads and loads of different options. Yes. Like, from all the sort of, um, all the concept designs. That, the um, concept suite, yeah. yeah. There were so, so many, wasn't there? Yeah, really handy, actually. If you got a bit stuck with your ideas about what to do, to look back at those, I think. Yeah, and to get yeah, some inspiration. absolutely. And I always quite like seeing them in black and white because you really do then notice what you're doing, don't you? It You're really distracted pops. by the papers. Yeah, that's, and that's it. I think the concept suites are a brilliant idea. Um, I mean, we do have one for everything we bring out, don't mm. we? So they are a brilliant idea. So I'm just struggling to get mine out a little bit because I didn't clean my dye out. So some of these are just doubled up, but they've popped out lovely. So let's get rid of that. So pop that to the side for one second. Um, again, this bit, you c it's entirely up to you. You could just pop this on, but I feel it gets a little bit lost in that pattern. Um, in fact, I think I, on the other one I did, I had them um, sort of opposing each other. Mm -hmm. I think it just looked a little bit nicer. So again, we're gonna bring in some linen cardstock. We're gonna line that across. So let's just pop that to the side. So I'm just going to roughly cut this. We're definitely obviously the same width, the five and three quarters. And then this is roughly two and a half inches. So let's pop this on here and see if I'm happy with that. Which I am, I am. I mean, I can always trim it down a little bit afterwards. Mm -hmm. So let's bring in, I'm just seeing if I've got an off cut um, wide enough. So, yes, yeah, so five and a half inches, which that is. And this is two and a half, so this is going to go. In fact, we don't need to, we're going to cut it down to two and a half. Because obviously, once I run it through with this die, it's going to be shorter anyway. Mm -hmm. So again, I always refer back to my project, making sure <laughs> I'm cutting this out the right way. So I know that I want my black piece on that way. So I know that that needs to be placed to the bottom. You can tell I'm not sure, can't you? We'll just do it. It'll look nice either way. It'll be fine. 
So let's pop that there. It's just one of them things, you know, when you just can't get your head around it. Yeah. It's no, not difficult or hard at all, but because I wanted one to be upside down to the other, yeah. could not do it. <laughs> Could not do it. That was one of those days where um, there may have been lots or lots of, you know, naughty words. Yes. But it was okay because the kids were at school. Oh, that's okay. Were there lots of things being thrown across the room? Oh, yes. Yeah. Lots of paper. <laughs> do you stamp your foot? I've been known to stamp my foot, yes. I do too. <laughs> and um, I, it's, I, I always think I'm like a spoiled brat, you know, I'm like, oh. But it's automatically you get really angry when things and don't you, quite you come out the way. You just sort of stamp, stamp your feet. Yeah. yeah. It, everybody does it. Absolutely. I reckon even Sarah, when she's crafting, I reckon there's times when she, things go wrong for her <laughs> as well. And I think yeah. that happens to us all. I've got it, look. But the thing is, it really didn't matter. I could have had it on either way. Yeah. The point was, what I was trying to do, I just kept doing it the same way again <laughs> and again. Uh, which was just driving me crazy, it really did. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop that there, we're gonna pop that on there. This one is gonna go in the bottom. Yeah. And I've got th those opposing um, details. Yep. So let me, so dot it again. Uh, oh, is, they're so invaluable, are these dotted tape pens, they really are. Those little intricate edge pieces. Shadaya says, I, um, I'm so happy. I received my box of dotty tape pens two days ago. Love. How many How many of those tape pens have you already used? That's what we need to know. <laughs> yeah, they didn't, they weren't in stock for very long, were they? No, no. opportunity to, if you, didn't, if you didn't grab them while you could, um, you know, you, you were going to lose out. Um, but that, that is often the case, isn't it? When, it's, when you've got an item that's really good and it does you know, exactly what you need it to do, um, and in fact, when you think about how, um, how fiddly it is if you've got to use your tacky glue and you don't have the tape pen, it, it, it's real, it really is a time saver, isn't it? It really is. I love these. I don't know, I can't remember what I did without them. <laughs> <laughs> so before, I definitely... Um, I'd never used my normal tape pens because I just knew that it would drive me crazy. So I, before, I always did, I always either used my pin top or I would put um, a big glob of glue on here and I would and tap, tap it in on, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember so. doing that. And then you've got the pleasure of being able to peel the glue off afterwards. Well, that's it, yeah. There's got to be a, a bonus to <laughs> being messy, hasn't there? I'm just cutting the tiny sliver off because it's just going over just a little bit. There. Oh, that's better. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut another strip of black and I'm going to pop it on the top okay. because I like that effect. So let me bring in this. See if this piece is long enough. So it needs to be six inches, the same as my box, which it is. And all I'm going to do is, I'm not even going to measure. It can be as thin or as thick as you want it to be because it's going to pop behind that anyway. So let me pop this to the side. Bring that back in. We're just going to pop it there. So entirely up to you. You can have it over the top. You can pop it underneath and judge how much you want poking out really doesn't matter um, if I want to cover more of that up I'm going to pop it on the top of there um, again this is just the aesthetic so mm -hmm. what you um, prefer when you're looking at it so making sure that's in the middle because that need the black bit is going to be as wide as my box and not this shorter mat and layer and then we're going to pop it over the top and, and the bonus is you've got, again, you've got a little bit of depth and dimension just on the bottom by adding these extra layers on. Also, again, you're adding extra strength to your box or your bag or your bag box, whatever we're calling it. Um, it is a bag box, isn't it? Yeah. I love how that's coming together. Yeah. It looks gorgeous. So I can leave that one thin or I could add, like you just have seen me cut that strip off entirely up to you. I'm going to leave that one like that for now because I think it looks nice. 
But again, bringing that one in, you can see that I made the top one a bit thicker on that one mm -hmm. um, and thinner at the bottom. Again, um, just whatever you're, you're wanting to do. So I think the last thing on the outside of this to do is just create the handle. So we're going to bring in just a piece of black card. I'm going to cut this to one. And let me just ch check the depth of this one because this one was absolutely perfect. It is. It's just an inch. I wasn't sure if we were an inch or an inch and a quarter. Mm -hmm. But we are at an inch. So let's get that out. Now at home, and I don't think I've brought it with me, I had my corner punch um, and I just cornered these off. Okay. I don't have it with me, but it really doesn't matter um, if you put them on cornered or on straight. I think it just looks nice if you corner those um, edges. And then all I'm going to do, just at each side, we're just going to score one inch and then one inch. And before I move that, I'm just going to, in fact, what I'm going to do is either, so I'll do it with my bone folder. Normally do it on the edge of the table, but you need to curve this first. Mm -hmm. You need to um, tell that paper, that card, where you're wanting it to go. If you try to bend that without scarring it, you're going to get little creases, little cracks. Uh, you don't want that. You want it to look as sleek and as possible. So we're going to pop that there. I'm going to put that on there, make sure I'm happy with how big my handle is. Mm -hmm. uh, that was just the full length of that A4 card. If I want it to be a bit smaller, just obviously trim some down. I'm really happy with that handle. So then all I'm going to do, we're just going to cut a piece of that pattern paper. I'm going to bring in... Ooh, that wasn't nice. <laughs> um, I'm going to bring in my alternating piece that I'm using. I think that green and that orangey red uh, looks beautiful together. So we're just going to cut a strip of this. Are there feathers on that one as well? Sorry? Are there feathers on that piece of paper There is. As well? There's yeah. feathers, there's tassels. Oh, look at this. Look at that gorgeous peacock feather there. Oh, yes. And yeah. there. Uh, just beautiful. So we're going to cut this just a sliver shorter than that uh, one inch wide. And then where is this? So let's just measure this. So just from that crease, up to crease line, that scar line to scar line, that is nine and three quarters of an inch. So we are going to cut this down to nine and a half inch. Uh, nine and a half inches. Pop that to the side again and before I glue it on I'm going to make sure I'm happy with that which I am I've got a little border all the way around and then we're going to glue this on you're right those colors together that sort of a, a sort of dark kind of turquoise sea kind of sea green color isn't it yeah and the orangey red they work so well together perfectly together yeah and the, I think that collection, perhaps sometimes they're things that people wouldn't automatically assume that they would like. But as soon as you see the, the colours all together, they work so well. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I think we'll leave it there. We're not going to glue this on yet, but we're just going to have it done. Okay. Um, but we'll leave it there. Let anyone and everyone catch up and then we can go on to the inside of the bag. Fantastic, that's looking really good. Um, Shadaya says, I just got her dodgy, just got her dodgy tape pens. I only just put them away last night. I'll be using them soon, but I will never run out. I will always stock up. That is the way that we should all be um, living our lives, making sure we don't run out of things, but we always do. Um, if you haven't already got your Baroque border dies, um, you want to get hold of them and today. These are absolutely beautiful. You've got um, four of these here, four different dies. Um, each one has got two dies. You've got the outer part of the die as well as the intricate kind of filigree part. This one is your Chambord, then you've got your Talence, then you have your Lyon, and then finally you've got your Dijon here. £24.99 or £29.99, platinum price is £19.99 or $23.99. We're going to take a quick break. Um, is this about what makes crafters special? 
Oh, exciting. See you in a couple of minutes. What makes Crafters TV so special is uh, you guys. It's really special because the the experts are really experts. They're they're um, really skilled at what they do, and they want to make sure that the audience also improves on their skills. Crafters TV is so special because you've got together a really sort of key group of people um, and people that are very passionate about the products. Crafters TV is so special because it's a unique community that we have with each other where we can learn and grow and communicate with each other. The community, the family spirit, the education, everything to do with craft. We are all like-minded people who share a passion. I love all the inspiration the demonstrators bring and all the knowledge for us out here. What makes Crafters TV so special, 100%, is the interaction. No other crafting TV channel or show has the same interaction. I love the community, I love chatting live, uh, I think that's the best part and uh, it's gone beyond crafting because we've become friends. It feels to me to be a really, really close relationship with our customers and viewers. You guys make us feel like we're part of your family. I've never been on the show before, but one of my friends who I did meet from CCTV encouraged me and I was on the craft along. A massive team of people and I think they've all got their role to play uh, and it just brings everything together. It allows us to do our job and just love it. Ah, oh, the people obviously the people not just here at Crafts Companion uh, but the viewers that watch us I mean everybody we have this real magical essence about it bye for now bye if you love crafters TV we've made it easy for you to watch us wherever you are whether you catch us on your tablet or take us with you on your mobile phone, it's easy to watch us anywhere. From here to here. Maybe don't watch us here. It would be easy to watch us here. Probably the easiest place to watch us is here. Crafters TV, with you wherever you are. We get to know people from places and walks of life that we wouldn't come across in our everyday life if it wasn't for um, Crafters TV and doing what we do. I got so many lovely comments from people when I started doing the presenting and it was just really such a lovely um, feeling and it's nice that people keep messaging in, you know, we see the same, same people and we know you can build up that kind of relationship with those people so it's just the fact that people like what we do and they're pleased and I do love it when people send us photographs of the items they've made. We talk about customers but really the going as a customer come out as a friend. The support that I get is amazing. The messages I get are amazing. Me personally, it is personal interaction. I've never had the best of health. I've always been open about that uh, with our viewers at Crafters TV. So many people are in the same situation as me health-wise. Other people have got a completely different health issues. They understand and they relate to what I'm going through, what others are going through. So whether we interact on a crafting basis or whether we interact on a health basis, a personal basis, we're all there to support one another. It is incredible. The reaction of viewers when they come to meet us is worth all of the, the early mornings when we have to get up for our early morning shows. Some of the customers come on as craft ambassadors and things like that, craft along with us and being able to actually chat with them on air. I love it, I really love that connection with them. We've had lots of uh, shows where we've done like um, craft alongs especially, where we've had viewers craft along with us. We had a particular viewer, Joy, who joined us once before and she literally made me cry on air and Jo uh, because the things she said about us it really was quite humbling that there are people out there that watch us and and invite us into their living rooms and really treat us like family Hello everybody, welcome back. We are having a fantastic craft along with these absolutely beautiful Baroque dies. They are looking stunning and this box box bag bag box 
Bag of box bag. Bag of boxes. Bag of boxes. Oh, yeah, it is a bag of boxes. <laughs> it is looking absolutely gorgeous. Lots of people enjoying what they're seeing. Um, Rhonda's asked, will you have the um, directions for the craft along on your Facebook page? Yes. No. No. <laughs> I can write them out. Okay. But uh, again, um, I've wrote them, but these, these are my instructions. So I can absolutely write them out. I'll write them out because I did it. I think I did it the last time. I went out home. Um, I think it was the Roaring Twenties thing, and I wrote yeah. them out. But I, I die cut everything out or cut everything out in white card as well to make it easier for you guys. So yeah, absolutely I can. But you remember, you can watch this back. Yeah. You can pause me. You can mute me and have the subtitles on if you want. Can't guarantee the subtitles will be saying what I'm saying because <laughs> uh, they very rarely do. But yeah, so don't forget that you can keep this. But yeah, I will definitely, I'll do my little picture montage thing that I do for you. So but yeah. you did say at the be beginning, you've tried to make it as simple as possible. Very you simple, know, it, yeah. It's um, sort of whole, um, whole measurements rather than having, and you're going down a quarter of an inch each time, aren't yeah, you? So yeah. it should be easy-ish to yeah. follow along anyway. Very simple yeah. to do. It's just lots of boxes stuck together. So all the dimensions, all the measurements are nice and simple for you to do. But then it's when you put them together, they look f even more fabulous. So, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Excellent. And yeah. um, we're going to carry on with um, the cross Yes. Dog? Yep. Yeah. I'll be reading my um, only Michelle can read them instructions. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what we've got so far. I've got my handle. We're not going to pop it on yet. The reason we're not is because we're going to be working on the inside. If I've got my handle on here, I'm not going to be able to work on the inside because it's going to be getting in the way. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to just we're going to get some pattern paper on here and that's going to do two things it's going to again it's going to add strength to this most of it is going to be covered up but what it's also going to allow me to do is when i pop my mount bar down the sides it gives me that line to follow so you might not want to use one of your best pieces of card or paper but if i bring this in to show you so even though you're not going to see it down the sides, yeah. you are still going to see some of that paper at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, so again, if you don't want to use your best bits, then absolutely don't have to. Um, entirely up to you. So um, what have I done? My guillotine. I've put it back where it belongs. That's yeah. why I can't what, find what it. What have we learned, Michelle? Don't tidy up. <laughs> <laughs> right. So remember those two panels inside are six inches by six inches. So we're going to go down a quarter of an inch so we're going to go to five and three quarters by five and three quarters let's just bring that in make sure that i'm happy with where it fits and i am so let's cut that second one so to five and three quarters by five and three quarters so let's pop that to the side bring this in and we're just going to glue these two pieces um, in and then we will move on to the first box so again I've done nice simple boxes but it's um, it's when you pop them together in a, I think a different way that you wouldn't normally see that gives you that lovely wow factor and to be honest, so you've got all the mats and layers for this. Actually, mm. if you didn't want to pop anything in here box-wise at all, mm. you could be popping your best papers on and you've got just a lovely gift bag. So let's pop that on there. Making sure it's all lined up. Nice and straight. What you could do with this, what would look lovely, is if you've got one of our dies that creates um, the album centre, you could create a little um, a little album, have all your pages coming up off of this. Oh, yeah. Because you wouldn't necessarily have to have it um, stood up. You could have it as a little album that opens, mm -hmm. and then you've got your album pages there. So it's a nice, it's quite a nice... Um, basic thing that I'm showing you that you could actually go on to make lots of different things with an album absolutely being one of them so let's pop that to the side 
and we're going to come in and we're going to create our first box. So the first box is going to be um, the pizza style box. So I'm going to get my guillotine and we're going to cut this piece of card to seven and a half inches. So let me get a full piece. So we're going to cut seven and a half inches wide by eleven and a half. So you're just sort of trimming that edge off. Pop that there and bring my scoreboard in. So on the long side, let me just find my... You've been tidying up again, Michelle. <laughs> that, I have. So, um, right, let me pop that to the side. So on the long side, we're going to score um, just double checking all my measurements. We're going to score um, at one inch. See, even sometimes I can't even read my own stuff. One inch, and then we're going to score, the, we're going to make this base four and a half, so that means we need to score to four and a half, um, five and a half, sorry. So we're scoring at one, and then five and a half. I always find your black card is a little bit harder, I think, to score. Because of the light, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So and harder here because you've got lots of light bouncing off the top of everything, yeah, haven't you? Yeah, definitely. So we've got that one inch um, side. We've got four and a half inches here, which takes us up to that five and a half. We're going to score at six and a half. And then we're going to go to... 11. So if I can get, could not get it in my little slot then. So 11, there we go. So you've got a one inch tab, that's four and a half. You've got one inch there, that's four and a half inches. And then I've got that tiny little bit at the bottom. Okay. We're going to turn it to the short side. We're going to score one inch down here, all the way down. And flip it all the way round and we're just going to scar again just one inch down that side. There we go. Right. So you can see straight away how that pizza box um, is looking. Yeah. Obviously that's the top, that's the side. Um, so we're going to scar all this first. If you were making this as a gift for somebody, what would you put inside it? What would you put? For me, it's always going to be <laughs> chocolate. That's <laughs> sweet. The <laughs> thing is, though, obviously, depending on how big you are wanting to make this particular box, yeah. you can absolutely, um, you know, adjust the sizes to whatever gift that you are making. Um, well, not to whatever gift you are making, to whatever gift you want to make a box yeah. to fit. So, like, a, a bracelet would fit quite nicely into that little box, Absolutely, it? yeah, it absolutely would. And I think you've got to remember, once you've done this once, if you keep one as a template, you can straight away look at it and know how to adjust it. Mm. So this is four and a half inches wide. If I want to make it three, three inches, I am going to. So all I need to do is alter that middle bit. So it's still going to be one inches. Then you're going to scar to the four inch line and then you're going to scar, um, well, you know, you're going to have that one inch tap. So it's only going to be five. So it's very easy um, to adjust it. And, and again, I know I say scribble it down um, as daft as it looks, mm. but when you scribble it down and you've got those numbers and you can add them up, you can see it. So I know that with this one, um, I've got a double edge there that I'm going to fold over. It makes sense to me, but your scribblings will make sense to you. So um, just get used to doing that, scribbling it down next to you when you're sort of working away. Um, if you get used to doing that, then everything else tends to make more sense to you. Um, right, so this is going to be my base, and this is going to be the bit that comes over. So we know that we need to get rid of that bit and that bit. So straight away, let's just cut that away. And this is something else that I always do. I will do this, especially when I've not done the box before. 
do it a little bit at a time. Don't cut all your notches and everything first before checking. Do you tend to make everything up out of to like, like copier paper first of all, just to make sure it works well, or do you go straight in with your, your card? Sometimes I use copy paper to do it, definitely. Um, and sometimes when I've got, so you've seen me use scrap pieces of card mm. or spare pieces of card to ink on. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'll use those yeah. because, um, you know, I know that they're just sort of scrap. So again, you can see that that is going to be the, the lid, which we're happy with. So these side pieces now, if you ignore that bit, you've got a box base, yep. which is we're going we're gonna to snip away as if it's a box base. So we need to go into here. And remember, I always put little notches on these, which you're going to do here, because then that's going to glue over and glue there. So we're doing that in exactly the correct place. So snip that away. And then we need to do that at the other side as well, just like if we were making a regular box. The only thing you need to think about here is, so if I snip here, um, my tabs are going to fold in. So what do you want to see at the front here? Do you want to see the edge of this bit or do you want it wrapping round? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'll cut yep. them both different ways and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So if I cut that there, and I cut this one here. It's just about the, the overall finish of it, really. So when I fold that one in, you can see the edge of this one here. You maybe can't see so much on um, with the camera, but I can see that there. But if I bring this one round, it's cleaner. Right. Do you understand what I mean? Because yes. yeah. you can see the edge of that there, but because that one's cut there, it's cleaner. Yep. It tucks behind and it looks a lot nicer. So that's what I'm, I mean. If you're not going to be viewing it from the front and you're going to be viewing it from the side, then you would sort of make a different cut. Yes. Does that, if that makes sense. Yep, it does. Right, so all I need to do now is we're going to glue these four tabs like we always do on any box and stick it together. So again, I'm going to use my Kalal. New Expressions by Candy says, Michelle, I just love handy construction pieces are usable. Thank you so much for sharing this with us and looking forward to seeing the written instructions so we can craft as soon as I get, uh, as, I, as soon as I can. Pamela says, I was crafting along and then I was called away, so I'm behind now, but I'm going to watch the rest of the show and finish this afternoon. It is such a beautiful project. Um, it really does look fantastic, all those different little boxes in there. I'm looking forward to making this. Yeah, I've got a few it's... days off at home when I. On, you have, on, yeah. Well, Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon I'll get home. Um, I'm looking forward to having a little bit of a play. It's always nice yeah. to do. Well, it's nice to be off. It's nice to have a play. But um, when I'm doing a project, um, I like to try and include lots of different things. So I'm teaching you lots of different ways, maybe to do sort of the same thing. So I've included a couple of different boxes in here. You might want to do all pizza boxes in here. Um, you might want to put your envelope boxes in here. But I'm just trying to show you the basics of lots of different stuff. So you've got, obviously, it's nice to do a box, but sometimes we want to do a box a lot different to what we normally do. Um, or just a little bit different, mm. or totally bonkers different. Oh, I made a little totally set bonkers. of drawers. I don't know, totally bonkers. I did, I made a little set of drawers, which were very quite simple to put together, but just gluing them together on angles, it's very much Mad Hatter-ish. It's very yeah. much Alice in Wonderland. And it just looks so different than if I'd have just layered them up together um, straight. Totally different effects by the same thing. So there we go, my little pizza box. Great. So all we're going to do is we're going to mat and layer some paper onto it. So remembering, so that is five and three quarters of an inch wide. So let's bring this in and cut this to five and a half. And my top 
is, what did we say the top was? Four and a half, so this is going to go to four and three quarters. And so we're always going to pop it on, make sure we're happy with it, which we are. And then do exactly the same. So I've already forgot what it is, four and a quarter. <laughs> Just let me double check. Four and a quarter it is, yeah. So let's take this down to four. Just oh, went a little bit wonky, straighten it up. And again, the width was five and a half. The good thing about me keep repeating these is um, it's good for you and me. So, yeah, let me just trim another quarter of an inch off that. So, there we go. So, that's perfect. So, we're going to pop that on the top. Mm -hmm. Let me. So it's again just as a collal glue, popping this together. And let's pop that on top. Wanda says it's 69 degrees out here in the Chicago area. It's time to open the windows. Uh, it seems to be warm everywhere. Wow. Yeah. What's going on? Um, Nina says, I definitely will be watching later. Little girls would love this to carry or store important items. What do little girls, what are little girls' important items? <laughs> Lipstick? Um, I don't know, what would, what would my, what would my daughter have wanted in there? Um, sweets, basically. Yeah. Ra raisins. Oh. Raisins and um, some kind of crayon. Or Polly Pockets. They'd be great yeah. to get something like that, wouldn't they? I remember when my daughter had things like that. Now there would be guitar picks in there, <laughs> um, random music items yep. uh, in there. Right, so we've done that. We're going to pop that to the side. Um, if you want to mat and lay it on the side, you absolutely can. I've just looked at the time. Again, we all know how to uh, go down an inch. You only want to put it on here. I'm going to cover these sides up in a minute. So let's move on to that next box so I can show you that. So again, I'm going to bring in another piece of black card. And so we need a piece of card, five and a quarter by seven and a half. So that's five and a quarter, and that's seven and a half. And we need one more piece at seven by seven and a half. Kylie would say she'd have rocks, badges, and sweets, maybe crayons hidden in there. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely sweets. Or little um, shells, children. Children are picking up shells. Um, you know on, um, on the beach and you'd get those pieces of glass, like sea glass? Yeah. And um, my husband and uh, his friend went on holiday with the kids, well, we were with the kids, and they told the children they were diamonds and emeralds. And I tell you what, that kept the children occupied for a really long time on the beach looking for diamonds and emeralds. Um, and even now they're like a bit disappointed that they're not real. <laughs> Got a whole box of them, if only they were real. Um, but yeah, lovely little um, thing to keep all your keepsakes and bits and pieces in. Yeah, mm. definitely. Right, so this piece that is seven and a half by five and a quarter, on this short side, you go into score at three quarters of an inch. So three quarters of an inch, then you're going to turn it round and on the long side, we're going to score at five and a half. And from this five and a half mark, we're going to go, we're going to have a three quarters of an inch. So that takes you to five and a quarter. My, and then that's my tab. So that is that piece. Let's bring in this next piece. So um, just on the five six and three quarters. So on this side, we're going to score. <laughs> I can't read my own measurements. Who did those? <laughs> So seven and a half inches, we're going to score at, 
Let, I'm just, I want to double check before I give you the wrong measurements. Right, yeah. so we're one inch there. We are three quarters of an inch there, so we're going to go to one and three quarters. And then we're going to score again, so it's going to be four and a half inches. So mm -hmm. what I do, when I've got sort of random measurements like this and I find it a little bit difficult, difficult move that up to here. So that's my two inch. So I know now when I want to go to four and a half inches, I can count it. So one, two, three, four and a half inches. Either put a notch there or score all the way down because then when you bring it back, it's giving you your true measurement. So six and two eighths. So that is at six and two eighths. And then we have got, I think that's a three quarters of an inch. So again, let's move that up. And I've got three quarters of an inch there, which is a little notch. So again, so if I bring that back, I know exactly where my score line needs to be. So then I'm going to turn that round and we're going to score at five and a half. I'm just, you know when you're not right sure? Five and a half, yes, yeah. so five and a half and then I've got that three quarters there. So what that takes me to six and two eighths of an inch. Okay. Um, could you go back over those last two pieces? Um, so a couple of people have got lost with the measurements of those, those last two pieces. Yeah, there. yeah, absolutely. Right? Thank you. So on this piece here. Yeah. To tell you what, let me cut these up for you. Yeah. And then you can see exactly what I'm doing. So this is going to be the base piece and so what I'm going to do, so you've got one side of a piece of card or a box yeah. and we are at seven and a half inches by five and two eighths of an inch. Okay. And it's got five and a half. Yeah six and two eighths yeah. and then you've got that tab there okay so let's <laughs> no i'm a bit concerned i can hear the gallery you're just like you, something something might happen in a minute. Yeah, it's a little... What, what's going to happen? <laughs> Just press it, ra pressing random buttons. It's like a big red button that says don't press. It's going to go wee, wee, wee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, with full disclosure, I think I've wrote my instructions down wrong right. on here. Um, oh, so what we are doing is we're making, so that is going to be on the front. This is going to go behind and I'm going to have a flap come over the top. Right. So if I bring in my box to show you exactly what I mean, it's this one, the little okay. flap. Oh yes. So I, I, I'm just looking at my measurements and I'm not really sure if I've done them correctly. So again, let me just snip these away. And then when it looks like it makes a little bit more sense to me, <laughs> I will show you exactly what you're doing. But the good thing about that is, is um, nothing. Tell me the good thing about that. 
the good thing about it is to show that you're not infallible. Uh, <laughs> none of it. us are. That, um, sometimes, you know, especially with those measurements, you start working your way through them and you're like rethinking, have you done them quite right? Yeah. You know, and it's, it, it, at least this way, we're showing you how, um, you know, we're going, going back over them a number of times to make sure that you've got them correctly. Um, sometimes these things just take a little bit of time, don't they? That's it, yeah, that's it. So, I do have my tab there, which is absolutely correct. That's my side, so I don't think I need that bit. Um, I am talking to you guys as much as me, I promise. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> you can see, as it's coming together, I think I've just done extra tab sizes. That is going to be my fold over bit. This is going to be the bottom, and again, this is my bottom. Not obviously. Would my it help bottom. if I went through what's in this bag while you work out your measurements? Oh yes. Do you think that'll please. help? All right. Okay. No problem. We'll go. We'll come back to that in a moment. We'll just make sure that they're all okay. And um, so we've got a Christmas mystery bag for you. It's not a mystery because I'm going to show you exactly what you're going to get inside it. And um, the first item you're going to get is your intricate Christmas sentiments die. Um, move that out of the way so you can see properly. Um, so this one is your jingle all the way. Then we have Twas the Night Before Christmas um, stamp set with that really beautiful um, kind of Victoriana imagery of the children looking out the window on Christmas Eve. We then have your um, Violet Studio um, Make Your Own Christmas Card set. So not only do you have your card blanks, your paper, your envelopes, you've got all the embellishments in here to make your cards. We then have your uh, layerable sentiments. So this is your... Um, Christmas tree. Wish you a Merry Christmas. The next one we have is your, what is it? Merry, Chris, Merry and Bright um, Edibles um, from the Frosty and Bright collection. We then have Towards the Night Before Christmas, we've got the scrolls and the music. Then we have this Christmas tree stamp, Wish Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. We then have Silent Lights, a layerable stamp set. Um, looks beautiful. You can see it on the back. Um, you've got those different individual stamps. And once you put them all together, that is a kind of effect that you can achieve. Then we have your punny stamps. It's pig winning to look a lot like Christmas. And Bar Hum Pug. Really love those stamps. My favourite. This next one is um, your bow stamp and die set. Really beautiful bow with all of those sort of um, the foliage, Christmas foliage, including um, your little pine cones. We've then got a set of um, these foam stamps, these um, foam stickers rather. Um, you use these for um, with your gilding flakes to create some beautiful designs. And then finally, we have got your sending Christmas cheer a um, little tag stamp and die set um, really really cute item on here the price for this is incredible 30 pounds or 40 dollars um, platinum price is 24 pounds or 32 dollars and you're going to be getting double points on that as well um, so a great opportunity to get this this is only going to be around today isn't it and finishes tomorrow is that right I think yeah but this will finishing tomorrow as well um, so yeah do make sure if you want any of those items it's worth getting it as the big bundle by them in individually um, Michelle how are you doing there? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I've okay. just chopped a bit of, off that was supposed to be there, but it's oh. not now there. So what I'm going to do is I can post this box afterwards. I'm not going to have time to go through it all now. So I'm going to re, re-stick it on. Yeah. Um, and then I will post them. Because what it's supposed to be is it's supposed to be as wide as this one. Right. To fit in here. So for now, you can either do two of your pizza boxes or do one for now and then straight after the show, um, I'm going to show you how to do the flop top box. Um, I, I know what I've done. I've, um, I've wrote the instructions down for the box that I was going to do that I didn't do and then trying to do it on this one. It's just not working. It's just not doing it. It's sometimes quite hard to see with a black card, isn't it? Oh, I just, I, I've just, I have, because I've got five different boxes on there, and because they are working's out as well, yeah. I've just gone totally wrong. But I want to show you this next bit, because this is quite, um, it's going to show you how to do the inside of the, the actual box. Mm -hmm. So, when you put both of your boxes on, be it two of these or one of the others that I'm going to show you in a minute, you've got that um, tiny little bit at the end, because this is five and three quarters, and this is six inches. So, what you're going to do is, let me pop that to the side. 
you're going to get a piece of your mount board and you're going to cut it to three quarters of an inch high. And then you're going to cut it to just short of six inches. So not even um, like a, a full two eighths, maybe just one eighth of an inch. So let me cut just one more. You're going to need four of these. Okay. So three quarters of an inch by five and six or seven eighths. Um, entirely up to you. So if I just show you the one side, you're going to replicate it exactly the same on the other side. So let me pop that to the side. And this is where we're going to bring in that green card. Um, oh, I need my guillotine again. So we're just going to cut this down so it wraps fully around um, this. So let's just cut that to, let's get rid of that, roughly two inches. And then another one. Pop that to the side. So all we're going to do is we want to sort of encapsulate that. Mm -hmm. So this is where I always tend to use my tacky glue. Um, I just find on mount board I tend to use tacky glue and red liner tape. Um, if you've uh, seen me doing this before, our box making uh, master class that we had a little while ago. Uh, go back to that and you can see lots of different ways to cover your mount board to make boxes and albums. There's, Fabric. Yes. I had that long conversation about that, didn't we? We did. I'm a little distracted because that box that I've just ruined is really annoying me. <laughs> Playing in my mind a little These bit. These things happen. We can. Yeah. Um, we'll get it all sorted out later. Yes, I will definitely. As soon as this show's done, because there's no way that I can wait any longer than that to get those correct um, measurements wrote down. Think sometimes when something goes wrong, you can't quite bring it back, can you? Yeah. Um, you get yourself into a bit of a fluster, and then you make more mistakes. The amount of times I've sewn things inside out or the wrong way round, and my mum, my mum will, she says, I'll be shouting at the television, saying, you, you've sewn that around the wrong way. But, um, you know, you just, uh, you just get into a bit of a muddle. It's unfortunately it was one of those things. Oh. But the thing is then it just annoys you and annoys yeah. you. It plays on your mind until you can sort of straighten it out. So all I'm doing is I'm using my glass mat to just fold those over. Mm -hmm. And I do the same on all four sides because it gives me a nice, lovely, straight burnish. We're going to cut those corners away on all four sides. And this is where I will bring in my red liner because it secures it straight away when you sort of pop it over the side. So a little bit of liner on that edge there. But you'll put it on the paper rather than the mount board? I'm going to put it on the paper rather than the mount board, yes. So a little bit of glue right next to that where it's going to fold over that edge. Mm -hmm. Bring in my pokey tool. Get rid of that uh, carrier sheet there uh, and just fold that over and it will grab it because you've got that red liner glue. We'll grab it, uh, red liner tape, sorry, we'll grab it straight away. You see, now nothing's going to work for me. <laughs> Could not get that off there. There we go. So these um, corners here, I always use my pokey tool. I press it in and pull it in mm -hmm. because it's going to make sure that that closes nice and straight. So the same on this side. I'm going to press it in, push it up. And then when I bring it over, you can see I have got a perfect straight edge. Oh, yes. So again, let's pop some red liner tape on here. Isn't it funny, I timed myself doing this at home and I had more than enough time. 
um, to do it in this craft along. And then that one little bump there yeah. has knocked me right off. Should we, yeah, George has just, just offered to take the blame for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. <laughs> and I ask you silly questions. That's all right. It's, there um, we go. Yeah, we, we, we've all done it. <laughs> I'm sure everybody at home has done it as well. Especially, you know, you're watching something on the television while you're, um, you're crafting and then you get distracted by whatever that is and then, then no sooner have you glued one thing together or you drop something in a bit of ink that you shouldn't have done. That's it. Happens to everybody. Then all we're going to do, you can see how that's wrapped along beautifully. We're going to trim a piece down and cover that mm -hmm. up. So let's make sure that that's long enough and it is... Again, because I'm using mount board, I always tend to use my tacky glue. Pop that on there. And while that one's drying, I'm going to do exactly the same on this one. Snip those corners away. I give them a nice burnish over. And you know by using this, um, you're going to get it perfect and nice, level and crisp. Never thought about that with your gloss mat. Never thought yeah. Like that. Makes sense. I use it for so, so much. I'm always using it for measuring with. Um, and the thing is, it's wonderful. You've got all those measurements on there. Um, and the fact that it's a glass mat, you can be doing lots of mixed media things with your inks and stuff. And you know it's always just going to clean up perfectly. Mm. So let's get this last bit on. And snip that away. And again, I always um, make sure you've got glue right in those edges mm -hmm. because as it goes over that side, you don't want it um, anything other than nice and tight on there. Red liner. Push that over. Do the same on the other side. Yesterday, when we were doing the Tiffany show, she was saying how um, you know she has little boxes with all of the different glues. You really do need lots of different types of adhesives for for, for a project, don't you? Yeah, you, you can't really get away do. with just one. No, they all have their own sort of special. Um, I don't know. They, they've, all got, they've got something that they work better mm. for than other glues do. Um, they've all got um, different ingredients in, so it obviously means that you know different things that you're going to use need different strength. Yeah. Things like that. Lots of people telling you not to worry. Oh, so fabulous. Pamela says, don't worry, it was, it was so beautiful. Lim says, don't worry about it, Michelle. <laughs> the expressions by Candy says, Michelle, please don't beat yourself up. It's actually quite refreshing to know that you're not the only one to be <laughs> making mistakes. It's nice that you show us how to fix it. And that is the thing, because we, you know, we all make mistakes. Um, yeah, and it is, it is just paper. Yeah. In the end. Um, um, it's good to see it's just it when I'm looking at my measurements that I've wrote next to me and then I'm, I'm sort of stood there and I'm realizing is that for the other box that I haven't <laughs> done make too many boxes <laughs> yeah edit yeah, it's not me going out, out live don't worry about it <laughs> so we have got again we've got that lovely strip down the middle that's going to cover that up There we go. So this little technique that you've just seen me do with these, you're going you're gonna to be using this exact same technique to make your albums and your boxes um, really strong. Because all you're going to do, once you've glued those edges together, they're really going to stay because you've got that extra thickness on there. Mm -hmm. So let me move all this mess. So I'm going to show you how to, if I show you how to glue this one in and this side, you're going to do the other side exactly the same. So this is going to glue on here, so we're going to glue the base, but before I do, I'm going to bring this in and this is going to glue next to my box, so I'm going to glue this on the side and you can see that my box is an inch 
um, high and you can see this is just that little bit shorter um, than that which is what I wanted so it's going to glue on there so let's pop this one on first let me bring this in you pop red liner glue on the bottom as well if you want to um, but remembering once this has dried um, nothing is moving that so I'm just making sure it's nice in the middle, even from each side. It's not too far to the top that that doesn't fold up. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna, I'm gonna open my box. And we're gonna give it a nice burnish in there. And then what we're gonna do with these, so you're gonna have one at each side. And then you're gonna, say you're gonna re replicate on this side. Okay. So let's close that. So what you need to make sure that you've done is you've got your bone folder and these are nice and flat. So make sure your top and your bottom is nice and flat. So we're going to glue it onto here. We're going to make sure that it's only glued up to about there with tacky glue. Red liner as well if you want. So only up to about there because that's where my box ends. But the piece that's going to be stuck to the bottom, so all along here, we're going to put some tacky glue. Because again, you've got that thickness there, so it's going to stay nice and snug. Snug. That's stuck and <laughs> snug, all in one. So you can see that I'm um, um, spreading that out just with my finger. So that is going to go on there. So it's going to stick to the side of there while it's sticking to the bottom as well. And make sure that you can bring that up make sure that you can bring that up as well because if you can't bring both of those up it's not going to close right so pressing that against there and also pressing that down on the bottom until that glue grabs and that glue goes off so let me just again let me open that so open that and then you can obviously get some real good contact with that Hannah says, I've never used mount board before. I bought some, but I've never used it. This is exciting. Lots of ideas about how to use mount board. Because um, you can get different weights of mount board, can't you? Um, you can. I think the weight that we do is all the same. Right. Um, I'm not quite sure what it is, to be honest. I think it's a good oh, 800 GSM, I would imagine. Okay. So we're going to do the same again on this side. So we're just going to glue so far down and then we're going to glue all the way across that bottom bit that we have just used our bone folder on to give it that nice crisp edge. Lots of dots of glue because we're going to spread it out with our finger. Making sure that that side's nice and clean. We're going to pop it up against here. And again, making sure that both these are going to close top and bottom. So it was six inches high. I, I've cut mine down to five and six eighths of an inch. Because mm -hmm. what you've also got to remember is once you've got paper wrapped around it, um, it's going to add extra length onto it. Yeah. So uh, again, depending on what paper you are using, always bear in mind um, that with your measurements. Making sure that we're pressing this down as well as against here because we want that to be glued to the bottom as well. So if I put that in there now. So if I bring that to the side for you to see from above. Oh yes. So when, um, when I close it up, yeah. you can see that it's going to sit there perfectly. So you can see if you do the other side as well, they're going to sit there absolutely beautifully. Mm -hmm. So if I bring this one in to show you what, exactly what I mean. That box in the middle, again, um, I'll give you the measurements afterwards, but it's just short of two inches wide by five and three quarters of an inch wide. Because then what happens is, you can see these two pieces of mount board I've put on. When you close it up, it sits round that box. Yeah. So it sits in it perfectly and you've got those two pieces meeting. 
Um, so hence why you need to glue the base so it sticks down here as well as to there. Mm -hmm. So if I close that one up and bring this one back in, um, you can see if I close that up now with my magnet, we've just got that half. Yes. Once I've done exactly the same on the other side, again, being mindful of how big or how wide I need to make these two. So I cut, that was um, three quarters of an inch, wasn't it? And remember, this is two inches wide. So if I bring in this, which is three quarters of an inch, it's not going to quite meet. Mm -hmm. So what you might want to do is adjust it just a little bit. So have one an inch, one, at one and three quarters, because you've got to remember, once you've got paper wrapped around that side and that side on mm -hmm. both pieces, you're going to add again that little bit of depth. So I always check, you see me check and check and check, except for that stupid box, um, <laughs> my measurements and stuff to make sure that things are fitting before I glue it on. And then, so if I've glued them all on and then I try to close it and it's not going to close, mm. I'm going to be even more frustrated. Um, so definitely always make sure that you're checking. So again, bringing this in, all I've done is I've added some gems around there. At the top, all I've done is I've glued it. So we've got our handle. We've glued our handle down and that's it. And then all I did for this is I just used my tag punch. I used my tag punch, I cut another one of those black um, decorative bits out and I've just put it along there. So other than adding that extra box and those two pieces here, um, I think we're sort of, we really mm. done. But that one, I'm going to post for you. I'm going to do it now because it's, um, it's one of those things that you just, I need to get done now. Yeah, yeah, no, I can understand. <laughs> so, but yeah, so besides that, you can see it closes absolutely beautifully. That's gorgeous. Love that. Really, really like that. Um, Donna says, Michelle, I love everything you could create. Sandra says, refresher is useful, so we get extra tuition out of this craft along. You're making us all feel better about it when we go wrong. Um, <laughs> so it, ha it happens to everybody. Um, Eleanor says, Michelle, my students always love to see the teacher make a mistake because they knew they now know that no one is perfect, and yeah. it actually made them more confident. Um, so I think actually, you know, it's it's a good thing. Um, we have got one question from Rhonda. She just says, how long is this box altogether? Oh, so if I open it out, yeah. So if I open it out all together, we are, I think, 19 inches because right. it goes an inch off of my um, glass mat. So 19 inches all the way opened. Lovely. That's brilliant. Oh, it looks gorgeous. Thank you so much for that. That Thank was really, you. really enjoyable. I'm looking forward to having a go. I'm going to take some pictures before I leave of your <laughs> scribbles as well, so I can make sure I've got all the details. Um, but you will put up the um, little yes. bits and pieces later on. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's now my nemesis. It now has to be overcome. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to make your own, you want to use the outline, um, board, the block border dies. Um, so these are them here. So this is your Chambord. This is your Talence. Toulouse. This is your Lyon, Lyon, and your Dijon here. Um, you can see it, it looks absolutely beautiful. Twenty-four pounds ninety-nine or twenty-nine dollars ninety-nine. You're saving ten percent. Um, Nineteen pounds ninety-nine is your platinum price, or twenty-three dollars ninety-nine. I think everyone has absolutely really enjoyed seeing you making that. It doesn't matter um, that um, it went a little bit. Skew if because we we all learn and we all we all make mistakes. So I do hope you enjoyed that. Say the same to my kids. It's always yeah. nice to see that we all make mistakes, yeah. um, and then I make a mistake and I'm like, no, can't <laughs> let people see that I've done something wrong. But no, you're right. Um, I can correct it and I will post you the um, sizes. So it doesn't really matter, does it? Fantastic. Loads of people saying they're going to be making it as well. So that's brilliant. I hope you enjoyed that. And we will be back a little bit later with Second Chart Sunday with loads of things. There's a whole host of goodies outside the studio waiting to show you what we've got um, in store. And um, so I do hope you've enjoyed the show so far. Michelle and I will be back in a couple of hours. We're going to enjoy the sunshine and I might get a little bit more of a tan um, while I'm outside. Um, so have a good afternoon and we'll see you back at six o'clock. <laughs>